Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nevin. I previously <laughs> worked in Mozilla, so um, <laughs> right now um, I'm, I'm, uh, I, 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 I don't work for any company. But this talk, uh, so it's not switch yet. Okay. So this talk is about the things I've learned um, during the journey. I work with the uh, mobile performance team at Mozilla. So Michael Camilla is the tech lead of mobile performance. So I l basically learn everything from him. So um, I feel like there's a lot of materials that's already on the internet, but this one I think is a little bit different. We can talk about it later. So the story begins uh, with a question. So one day I asked Mike that, um, Michael, um, how do I convince my product manager in Taiwan uh, to put performance into our roadmap? Because you know, performance is always the, that, the, the, the last thing or the, the least important thing. So he, uh, he told me we can do a compare screen. So the trick he showed me is on the right hand side, uh, we remove all the initialization code uh, in uh, application on create. So <laughs> the code starter speed is much, like super fast. So product manager was very surprised. So he, uh, she asked us, like, how do we do it? So basically, we just remove the useful code and make it the app useless. <laughs> this is not what we want, right? So we want um, to make it real. We want uh, to make not only just remove the code, but also, you know, have the same uh, feature. Um, so this is the agenda. So firstly, I'm going to talk about performance uh, issues we faced, some calling part and some Android part. And now we are going to talk about, uh, I'm going to talk about how do we fix them, some tips and tools that we use. And uh, last but not least is the mindset. So. Um, this, so normally the, vid the videos we see on the internet is uh, all about the tools, the tips, but not too much about the mindset. I think this one I, is really blowing my mind um, when I work with Michael. So calling first. Before I jump into the question, I will, I will, I will take a survey, like how many of you are uh, server-side developers? Oh, cool. Uh, how many of you are uh, do both Android and server? OK, cool. So. There's something you might be interested in. So first thing, uh, we're going to talk about talk coroutine. So we know coroutine, for those who you already know coroutine is, you probably can, stick, um, can know that a coroutine uh, has dispatcher. So ba basically, dispatcher is, um, it will, is the me mechanism for calling to let you specify the third pole size, that the third pole that your coroutine is going to work on. So coroutine, although it lets you write uh, a synchronous code in a synchronous way, but under the hood, it's still threats, right? And there are four uh, preset dispatcher come from the coding library. We have an uh, issue with the default dispatcher. So by the definition, the third pole size of the default dispatcher is number of CPU core or two, depending on which one is larger, right? But on small, uh, like low-end devices, sometimes we only have two cores. So uh, small pole size could be an issue because your task needs to be run. Uh, your task will be run after the other task gets finished. So you, you, it will be longer than expected. So on high-end devices like the one we use, like Pixel phones, it should be okay. But on Samsung S6 and below S5, it's going to be an issue. So um, th this what happens on um, especially uh, uh, library library initializations. Um, because we know that a lot of libraries want to like to put the library initialization in the application on create. So I uh, do the application uh, like library dot init in the application on create. Sometimes people, um, sometimes library developers like to put uh, library initialization in content providers because content provider will be initialized before your application gets created. So if you are not sure like how many content provider are injected into your app, you can go to uh, Android Studio and uh, manif Android Manifest merger. You can see the, uh, the final ma manifest and see where it's come from. And then you can realize, oh, so like for example, Firebase, uh, Crash Analytics, uh, they do the same thing. So you will have uh, ad additional two um, content providers. So this is one thing. The other thing is I once got, call re uh, got caught in a code review is about uh, list versus sequence. So this is kind of interesting because um, I'm, I'm sure I'm not sure if it's going to change because because um, the JetBrains team uh, the calling team involved calling uh, very 
very often, but this is still the case right now. So we use a lot of map filter operators um, in, our code, in our code base. So we can find every time we call these kind of these kind of operators, you will create a lot of like array list. Um, so this is not very useful because you're going to use this once. If you call other operators, you, you, you use these other kind of like temp temporary objects, and you get thrown away. So you have me more memory footprint, right? This is especially a, a pain point if you are running server-side code because we all know that um, because we need to scale up fast. Like uh, if you have if you are running on on cloud, right? Uh, a larger memory footprint will uh, make your um, will will increase the time you scale another instance. Uh, if you have more like a thousand instances, this is going to be a pain in the ass. So um, this is what the reviewer suggests me to use sequence. So although under the hood it still looks like it's creating another um, sequence, but actually it's a decoration pattern. So we see it's passing the sequence itself and the transformation function together. And once you call collect, uh, it will apply the transformation one function one after another. So uh, no extra um, like temporary object being created, so less memory pressure, mem less memory footprint. Uh, the other thing is, I want to suggest this talk. Uh, uh, it's given by the Android, uh, I, think, I think by the Google team, right? And Android Day Summit 2019. So it's called co co Calling Performance, uh, calling mis performance Miss Buster. So first, when I first le le learned Calling and M13, I found there's a lot of like auto-boxing, temp objects. So I have a feeling like the bytecode will be larger. Although it's all compiled down, compiled down into uh, JVM bytecode, but um, I feel like the code size it, it, it will be larger than uh, you if, if you use like vanilla Java. So, but this code talk, uh, like totally like solve my mystery. So, first thing um, to give a conclusion is about comp compiler optimization. So, it's com before you compile down to JVM bytecode, uh, the compiler is smart enough um, to uh, create a smaller, a more efficient JVM bytecode. Uh, for example, range, right? And uh, on Android, we have this R runtime. So since we are all Android developer, we know that R runtime could do a, some more uh, like a, another round of optimization when you install your APK. So you can do some inlining. So in some cases, um, the calling code on Android will probably be faster. But um, on server side, we don't have this benefit of R runtime. But to my personal experience, the normally um, the Performance issue is not on the calling compiler. But it will do add up like 2% uh, of compile time. So then I'm going to talk about Android. So before I jump into the next topic, uh, any question? OK. So bef before we talk about Android performance issues, uh, we found there's a very critical kind of like mindset, but it's like identified a bottleneck. The bottleneck is the places where we compete for resources. And the resource like CPU, memory, disk, network, main thread, right? So um, for us to take a slow performance on recycle view, for example, there could be disk read, slow on disk read, slow on network request, slow on, slow on image transformation. So they are IO and uh, CPU. So which one is the culprit? Which one caused the slow performance? It's very important. Sometimes we're fixing a wrong problem, so the issue didn't fix, right? And for Firefox desktop, uh, we found that the JavaScript library is a, is a problem. Because like for web pages, you load JavaScript library one after another. Um, so the disk, the, the disk could be the culprit. And for Firefox or Android, we do found that code startup is slow because the main thread is busy. Um, we can talk, we'll talk about it later. But um, they are, these are the strategies that we, um, we use to solve the performance issues. As for disk, we know, know that let offload from main thread for network, we know whether there's a cache or local first, like room kind of strategy, right? How about main thread? Um, for the code startup issues, like we said before, the library initialization is one of the big problems. And there are like start other things like static member initializations. So when, the, when your user click your app, um, the um, package manager will load your APK from the disk, 
and the service load, uh, the the uh, service loader will uh, load your classes into your memory. And so, if you have if you do too much work in a, in a static member, um, in a static member of your classes, you're gonna have some trouble. So basically, they are all the heavy lifting works before your first the use the first round, which is the user see your screen, right? So let's take this screen for example. This is the app that Benjamin and I and uh, the team in Taipei, uh, we wrote the uh, Five Fast Lite. The, it is a browser app for emerging market. So the speed is the important thing, uh, because in emerging market they don't have like uh, the most high end devices. Okay, so this is onboarding screen. So let's take a guess. Does the user need to see the crash reporting? Does the user need the crash reporting library or the user state before the user sees the screen? Like let's take a, like a poll. So if you guess is we need those two things. Please raise your hand. Or we don't need those two things. Please raise your hand. Okay. Some people say, yeah, it depends, right? So for those who of you are the smartest person, because <laughs> you know, it really depends. Okay. Um, my my own personal opinion is, we don't. We do need those two libraries. Why? Because if this app, if, if this page crash, we want to call it by our server, right? So before we the user see this screen we want the crash reporting library to be initialized. It's for our use case. The other thing is the user state. So whether you, sh you put in a shared preferences or database, so that's the, that's the way we know the user f like launched our app for the first time. So the user haven't launched our app, so we need to show them the onboarding page. So these two things are the things that required before uh, the, um, these two libraries are the things that required before the user see this screen. How about those two, uh, the, the, the four library, the four kind of library, like ad network library, if you have ads in your app, or you have tracking, you have distribution checking, like adjust, or you have uh, some utility library, like for some kind, some kind of manager or like account manager libraries, or push notification libraries. So when the users see these screens, those are the things that are not required. So for the, those are the things that, that are not required, we can do it later, right? So uh, the mobile performance team in Mozilla, they come up with this idea called Visual Completeness Queue. So if you want to see the uh, implementation, you can go to the, um, uh, the GitHub issue here. I'm going to show you how it, how, how it works. Basically, it's just like five or 10 lines of code. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. So basically, you put all the library initialization work into a queue. So when the queue is get, it, it, when the task in the queue get is, is queued, um, so, you, so all the view hierarchy has a callback, right? So before the pre-drawn, uh, we wait for a couple seconds, and then we do whatever uh, the user needs to see. Uh, what, what the user, uh, what are the things that can be done after the user see the first screen? So this is a, a strategy that we use. So at the end, um, the app is f as fast as, as the previous like demo app, and it worked. Now I'm going to talk about the tips and tools. So um, the first thing is set debugger to false. We, we found that very important because the uh, first thing when we do the profiling, we found the result is kind of like shaky. Sometimes it's like this, sometimes it's like that. And we found that on the talk, on there's a there's a link to the video. So on the on the talk from Google, it says set debugger to false. Because when we, you set debugger to true, uh, there, will, there will be a lot of uh, like logging, uh, like debugger be behavior. For example, wait for debugger. So this will give you an unstable profiling result, and you are not, and those profiling results will, will not help you to give a very precise uh, solution, um, like a result. The other thing is en enable strict mode. So uh, if you enable strict mode, and you can set the uh, penalty to vitals on your debug build. So every time there's a dig read, uh, disk read on main threads, an app will crash. Of course, you don't want to do it in production app, but um, you can uh, check the build type in the code, and if it's in the local debug build and they enable it and set penalty to vitals. Then I'm going to talk about in the wild and uh, in the lab performance tools. So monitoring, monitoring, monitoring rule tools is like these are the this this is what I call in the wild. So basically, when the app is shipped, there's no way you can get the uh, the profiling result from the user's phone, right? But 
it's kind of like let the user be the tester or test in production, <laughs> which we normally don't do, it, do this, right? But the real situation in the production, we really want to know, right? So performance, uh, Firebase performance monitoring tool library is a library. If you have perform, uh, if you have, if you so you can you can install it instead uh, separately, but uh, uh, with Firebase libraries. But it will add if you add this one, it will add about six hundred kilobytes to APK size. But you don't need to add any lines of code of except for the Gradle task. Uh, you don't have to add anything in your in your uh, in your production code, and then you can get app start, slow screen render, and network um, performance metric for free. If you want, you can also add some custom traits because um, sometimes when you can you can like, just like what we do like local tracing as well. So it's like this. You'll be here. So we have a uh, assumption like some kind of operation will be slow, but actually it's not that slow. So. I found it very useful. And the other thing is Android Vitals. Uh, this is uh, definitely uh, something I didn't um, I didn't know before I start to find the uh, in the wild tools. So this is um, you can go to Google Play consoles and you can find under Android Vitals. You can see. So basically, is it it like give you the result that how how you perform compared to your competitors. So the peers are the, the competitors, uh, the, competi the other apps in the same category, for example, um, utility apps. And there, these are the metrics. Uh, for example, code means your app run for the first time. Warm means your app was killed by the system because the system need memory. Then the user click on your app and you come back. And hot and slow hot stop is that you go to recent apps and come back. So like if it's like, uh, The other thing is that the frame, slow frame and frozen frames, so um, the, which means they draw very slowly for some kind of frames. This, this is how it looks like. So you can see if you're doing better compared to your peers or you're doing worse compared to your peers. This is kind of an indicator to let you know um, if anything you, you, should, you can start fixing. The other thing is profiling tools. Profiling tools are I, what I call it in the lab testing. So uh, sometimes you need a stable environment because you, you, so you know, there's a very interesting issue that Android uh, Google team found is the thermal throttling. Because when your mobile phone is hot, uh, that you will slow down your CPU because you don't want to ruin your, your hardware. So if you use a real device, unstable device, you found that um, the, the, the reprofiling will, will be different. But you want a stable uh, environment. Like some kind of, sometimes it's like CI, right? So Android Steel Profiler, I believe most of you already know, it's required to, uh, to set debugger to true. But you can get uh, CPU memory, network usage. Um, you can drill down to the, uh, where the master call happens. Uh, recently, the energy part, so you can like give it very details how um, what is happening. I'm not going to talk about details here. But if you want to set debugger to false, like if you, if you want to profile uh, like a pr release version, you can you can build your release version, right? Just use your customized um, debug uh, key tool, right? Uh, key store. So first thing what we use is Firefox Profiler. Um, Fast for fire story, this is only uh, uh, useful if you are using Gecko View. So Gecko View is like a web view alternative. Um, you can give you more uh, control uh, about the web content. If your app is have a lot of web content, for example, you have a web, web view in your app, Gecko View is something you can consider. Uh, because at web view is only give you the very limited um, API, APIs. But Gecko View is, is uh, totally uh, built by uh, mobile team uh, by the by the uh, uh, Firefox team, and the profiler will give you um, the same uh, similar things like memory, CPU, web page, uh, network. Um, even when your app is set debugger to false, so this is the link to t to uh, to let you know how to enable it. Uh, this is how it looks like. So for this web, con so you might not see this very clear on the slides, but basically it's like. You can see the web content is different, and doing the different web contents, and the Java part, you can have um, the stack chart similar to Android profile. And the other one is customized tools. So basically, we leverage Logcat, um, so and we here we use System Clock Elapsed Real Time, 
We, the reason that we don't use the current million timestamp because current million timestamp is the work clock, and user can change it. But uh, instead, real times give you the millisecond bef uh, since boot, and uh, also including time sleep, time including sleep during the sleep. So this is more accurate. And after you run um, the, your job, you can use package manager. You can ADB command multiple times, and then you can have a lot of results in your logcat. And we, there's a Python script that we wrote to do the average. So here we are doing the average to get kind of a, a sense how we do before the fix and how we do after the fix. So we can have a final result like this on, on X device before the fix, after the fix, um, and how the result get, how the result. So we can like not guessing we are fixing the, pro the issue probably, but we can have a re like more reliable uh, number. This is not optimized, but average, um, the average number is good enough for us right now. If you don't have questions, stop me anytime. Now I'm gonna talk about the mindset. So I do have an issue because I don't know how much effort should I put in. Um, Mike, uh, uh, Michael told me that if I only want, if I'm the only person to work on uh, this product, just put performance in heart, I like love it, <laughs> but probably don't have time because I need to ship features. But if I have, if I have five engineers in the t in the team, uh, maybe the tech lead should look at the performance issues. If I have ten person, uh, ten people or more, we kind of need some kind, we need some kind of like automation tools like perform, uh, Firebase performance monitoring or looking at the vitals. If we have thirty people. Uh, that's the situation what uh, most is right now. You, you probably need a dedicated resource. So we have uh, like a couple of people in the team to look at performance issues. And uh, how to set the goals. How fast is fast enough? Because we all know like 60 milliseconds kind of like the rules on the wall, but <laughs> sometimes it's very hard, right? Um, so this is the UX team uh, found for our app, our product, uh, 250 seconds for UI transition, for example, uh, fragment transactions. 100 milliseconds for UI events, like pressing a button and you can see the repo, stuff like that. And where to start? Uh, so the first thing is random walk in a critical, critical area. Because you, you are all developers, we are all developers. We, we have a very good instinct, quad could be slow. Um, the other thing is Google Play Review. Now Google Play Review, um, like listen to your, your, your users, they probably say, some kind of features, you are much slower than your competitors, right? Now Android Vitals, when menu QA are very useful as well. Because we have an issue um, with a package manager. So we know when we load URL pages, um, we will ask uh, the, if any app installed on the user's phone can handle this URL. So we can open uh, an app for the user. So it basically is deep link. So the browser needs to handle <laughs> to implement deep link resolve the mechanism. Um, but if the, if, if the U, if your web page is a Google search, you actually have a multiple redirects. So you click on the redirect, you will redirect to the Google uh, tracking system and then redirect to the user's website. And the user's website probably needs to redirect to, um, to their checking, distribution checking, web, uh, for adjust for example, and then come back to their U, for example, Spotify.com. So you will have like four to eight times redirect. So every time you query a package, package, package manager. And this is a pain for us because query package manager on the hood is, is RPC code, right? And I, a query package manager is querying its local database um, after it, re it received RPC. So um, it will cost you about like 30 or 40, sometimes 80 milliseconds. If you have eight redirects, it's 240 milliseconds. This will be much, much slower. So it, it, this is called by the menu QA. So menu QA could be very helpful as well. And the best thing scenario is um, the performance regression code in the CI. And uh, this is the situation uh, that the mobile performance team is doing right now. It is the direction that we're going right now, but we are not there yet. So for performance regression, and there's a wiki page uh, that the uh, uh, team is working on Phoenix is the like a code name for the product. So first thing is discussion within team members. So like for if you want to reuse run blocking, use it for a good reason because we all know run blocking is the easiest way to start coding. Right? 
is the easy way for fix for, for people to start a new core routine. Uh, but this is not good because you will block your the current thread, right? Uh, the other thing is the price streak mode. Uh, streak mode is a very uh, interesting issue. Uh, is a me good mechanism to alert the developer uh, you are violating some rules. Some developers just, just suppress the warning. This is not good. So we let all the reviewers know if you see those things, uh, don't approve that pull request. Uh, but we found after when there are more and more uh, like external contributors, it, it, we will spend a lot of time on this kind of like, conversations. So we do a, we write a, we wrote a read link checks. So it will be much easier. If you have a violation for the above, and then the app just won't compile. So there are some good reads. Uh, I'll show the slides later, um, so you don't have to remember that. But uh, the first two is wrote by the Google team. So the first thing is how they find regression in uh, CI. And the second article is they use k-mean cluster. Because for if you run, if you collect a lot of, a lot of like, numbers in the CI, and uh, you will have alert about there's a regression coming out. There's a performance, performance regression coming out. But you, if you like, cry too many times, and it's a false alarm, people won't, won't, won't ignore it. So they, the K-means cluster is the way they use to um, analyze the number to make sure it's a real regression. Um, but we only have a couple of people in the team, so we can use average. And average is not a very uh, reliable um, metric. And the, the, the other two articles is kind of like the mindset um, by the Facebook performance, uh, mobile performance lead. So do a quick recap. Uh, first thing is set debugger to false to avoid unreliable uh, results from profiler. And um, visual completeness queue. You don't have to do everything before the user see the first, uh, first drawing. And uh, discuss the fix as a team. For example, um, Sometimes it's by design. You probably fix the performance issue, but you broke the design. So the designer might not be happy. So some, if you do, especially when, when you start uh, fixing a performance issue, and the issue is not your code, it's other people's code, <laughs> people feel like they are, they are being pointed fingers. So this, gonna, this is not healthy in the team. So discuss the fix to understand what's the trade-off there. Um, before you start to fix the problem. This is super important. I, I didn't realize before I get started. So um, this is, I found is very interesting. The other thing is avoid quick fix. So, because normally the, the, the first instance is add a cache. Because <laughs> the, 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 oh, the reason we use cache is, is it will be faster. But when we use cache, you add a complexity. To how, when to invalidate a cache, when to sync the state. The app will be much more complex. Uh, so understand the root cause is more important than fix it. And uh, there's another uh, new directions the mobile performance team is going on, is, is going to, is the defense versus offense. So we can talk about the slides, uh, the, 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 the flow. So when we have uh, issues, we set a goal first, and then we understand the problem, whether it's from, uh, we'll test manually or add some telemetry to collect the data from the users. And then understand the root cause, and then we have two approach. One is do the play offense. The offense approach is like fixing the issues, identify issue, uh, fix it, and verify it. Like most people, most of us will do this, right? Another approach is play defense. We prevent it from happen. We don't wait till it happen. We pre prevent it from happen uh, by stopping regressions. So the f we, we, we talk about the uh, strict mode, right? So strict mode is one approach to play defense. CI, like stop performance regression in CI is, all, is also a defense a, a way to do it. And then repeat it. Repeat it means whether we set a better goal, maybe our goal is wrong, or maybe we didn't understand the question enough, or we're setting a wrong criteria, or how to improve the way we verify the result, how to, how to improve the way we play defense. So there are two use cases. One use case, is the visual completeness queue. So we the use uh, we know um, we talk about um, the we found the cost out cost out of time is getting slower and slower because we t put too much uh, library initializations uh, in the code. And then after we dig in more, we understand that this on this happens most of the time in uh, low end devices. 
So we found the default the default dispatcher is the corporate, and um, we the the way we play events is we use visual complaint SQ, and we we verify using the other system. Um, here's the link. It, um, we use this to collect. Basically, it's, it's similar what when we see before is use leveraging locat to verify. Okay, this fix really solve our issues. Another use case is the packaging manager example that we talk about. Like set up a goal first. Some we all the talk, or talk, we all know the background uh, background story about this one. So this is called by the manual QA. So we turn on strict mode, and we use Firefox debugger um, to understand what's happening because we found oh there are so many redirects like two uh, three three something HTTP status code, and um, and then we decide to fix it. But then we realized it's a requirement for the UX team because we don't want to uh, catch the res we don't want to catch the uh, the package manager result the because sometimes the user might in run uninstall your app so if you catch the result from package manager it may not be helpful so the UX the UX team want the user to really have the app to make sure the app install on their devices so this query time is not avoidable. So we talk with the UX team and we decide we not to fix it. This is by design, and we write, write, wrote, wrote it down. So I think that's pretty much about my talk. If you want to uh, help us, you can share usage data in Fax Fast for Android if you install the app, or you can read this blog, multi app performance blog. Um, you, you have uh, mobile performance and also desktop performance as well. So this is my t sharing. Thank you. How do you define the performance issues to fix under daylight pressure? Yeah. So um, we have a triage process. So um, the product performance team and the product team, we list the issues. So basically, we have a GitHub page, and there's a label. So sometimes we say need triage. Um, normally, we won't change the architecture before the release, right? It's never a good idea. But you have to prioritize it. 